Alright team, welcome, welcome to the day one for the Selenium training, the batch of September 29th. Uh, hope at this time everyone is able to hear and see my screen clearly. So without any further delay team, we're going to get started uh, and we will spend the next few minutes getting a good introduction into the tool. I do not want to focus on any theoretical concepts or presentation point of view. I want to start showing you everything in a very practical manner. Now, team, what happens is uh, there is a lot to learn as part of Selenium, as whole part of automation with Selenium, especially because there is so much about the programming on Java aspects. There is a lot in terms of an automation framework concepts and a lot of other things in terms of an IDE, Selenium server, web driver and so on. So the whole sessions will be broken down into a lot of these live classes as it goes along and we will also be given access to a lot of other recorded topics that I've done previously on different areas. Okay. Each of you team who have been confirmed have been sent a welcome pack and you have an access to a folder on screencast.com. This is a secure folder. You will need access to be able to sign into it. Once you've got the access and once you visited there, you will see that under the Selenium folder, there are many uh, files. But more importantly, there are two complete batches. The one which we completed recently started on August 18th and the first one which started on the July 5th. As part of this folder, I will also be hosting these new videos as they happen. All the files that get generated in the class, the scripts, everything will also be here under all files. You will also see uh, things like the jar files and Eclipse installation and various other important information embedded here too. Okay, now as we go along team, I will tell you there will be certain sessions that you may have to watch before we come to our next class. So there will be break in classes over the weekend or a little longer and we'll be able to go back, view some pre-record sessions and come back. Okay, I also highly recommend you team to be able to go to the YouTube channel uh, which is the QTP eLearn channel and watch the Selenium with JUnit day one, day two and there will also be a day three. Uh, for that. Watch those three and that will give you a good head start about the whole uh, training and how it happens, what's the basics about Selenium. Okay. Now, uh, I will publish a course contained which is detailed. Uh, currently, if you go to my website seleniumelearn.com, you'll be able to see the entire course. I don't want to spend too much time explaining anything on it. Everything is handy and you can look at whatever is there. But apart from what is already mentioned, there are a lot of newer things that are being introduced into it and uh, by end of this training, you will see all these topics being covered. So the latest version of it, you will get an answer to it. Okay. Now, uh, team, for the day one, what I want to do is very quickly get on with showing you an application and then showing you how we work with Selenium to automate it. The whole intent team that you and I here are uh, is that primarily Selenium is a very, very hot tool in the market. There are a lot of job openings with that tool. Okay. So with Selenium, you can do something called as your automation testing. Okay. There are two parts mainly to it, automation and testing. Now, we will focus completely on automation. Not that we don't focus on testing. The fact is, Testing is going to eventually be a simple few steps away once we have mastered the art of automation. To do this, there are many, many small uh, tools and uh, programmings that we have to learn. My focus is going to be around Java along with JUnit at TestNG. So we will do a lot of programming with Java. There is no specific prerequisites at, at all for this training. So I assume that everyone is a beginner. I go very gradually in the beginning, but eventually you will see that we do a lot of coding. Everything that we'll do, theme will be based on the code uh, and that will be a huge collection for you for a future reference. So if you look at any of these earlier files uh, and folders, you will see that there's a lot of work that goes around these things. So there's a lot of um, uh, programs that we do. And everything that you see team in terms of the scripts and so on, we will handwrite them as part of the session. We will not try and just explain or walk through some things. Okay. All right team. So now having said this, let's start off and go straight forward into learning uh, the tool. So for the learning aspect team, I have picked a good uh, 
website called edmunds.com and I'll give you a quick walkthrough and then talk about how is it that we wish to automate this. Okay, so we will take our baby steps initially and eventually we'll get to a very strong understanding on Selenium. That's the whole intent. Okay, now this is a website where users can go and be able to get different details about the kind of affordability, the kind of loans they will have to pay, basically get a whole idea about their entire uh, financials about auto loans okay so one of the cases let's assume that you've joined an organization which is something very similar if not auto calculators some other calculators if not calculators some other application which does a process the whole idea is the users can come here and for example in this case enter some monthly payment that they can afford in terms of their price range and click on go I'm talking about the users. Now let's say that you've joined this team and you're trying to automate the process of this part of testing. Okay, so you are simulating what the user does and perform the same steps. So we went, we entered something called as how much can we effort. Then let's say that I want to update a zip code here. So I enter the valid zip code that I want. And this is automatically come up from the first page. We select a specific term of the loan, we set an interest rate of let's say whatever we think is the finance rate. Let's say I have a trade in an old car that I could exchange and I may get about $4,500 out of it and I have a liquid cash of about 2000 All of these teams are nothing but inputs that we have given to this system called as a simple calculator. It's a web based application. All right. So, Depending on these inputs that we've given, the this application processes that input and gives us a specific output. And that is what we're trying to see. This whole process of entering, taking inputs, entering it to the application and getting an output back is our current scenario. Okay? Not a complex thing, very simple structure. Manual users, you and I, we use such things very regularly in our daily life. Now the next step as part of that is the users will go and click on the calculate button. Once they click on the calculate button, after a brief few five, six seconds, you will see that the results will come here. Now, the total down payment that we are planning to put is $6,500 and we are looking at a car that or a vehicle that we can purchase, the sticker price or the MRP or whatever be it is around this range. Depending on the parameters, we've got this. If I change any of these factors here, for example, just a scenario, and then click on calculate again, we will get new numbers. Okay. Now, if you are part of an organization which has applications like this and you belong to the testing team, one of your main core focus areas is that how can we ensure that this application is working correctly? so that when the end users uses this tool, they do not have an issue. Not just issue in terms of am I getting the correct results, but also are they able to enter the value? Is the system prohibiting? Or if I give some blank information, will it give me the proper uh, dialogue messages? All of these are inputs. Okay, So you come up with different scenarios that a user might face, different combinations of steps that they might perform and try and evaluate and see what can uh, be the result and to see if your application is able to handle all of them correctly. All right. Now that was a very, very quick walkthrough team of what I wanted to give you. Now what I'm going to do is show you a very simple Excel that I created in fact for a QTP session, but we could use the same thing out here. Is there any QTP anyway? I think there is. So that's okay. I will uh, do a control H, control H, replace QTP with Selenium. I mean, I wish I could replace the entire training of QTP with Selenium this way. It wouldn't ma matter too much if I could do that. But the point is, every tool has got its own way of working at the back end. Automation as a process is common, but the tool, the way it works is a little different. Okay. So at this point, team, let us not even talk about automation. Let us talk about how do we document these steps and then how do we try and perform them. Now, our end goal is to create a kind of a system or a tool or a script which can 
do whatever we do manually or most of it and be efficient at the same time in the sense if I'm doing it in five hours it should be able to do it in half an hour something similar okay it should be able to do more work than we can do as manual users we can reuse it in the sense that in future I will be able to go back and do the same it's not like I I do all the hard work and only one time I get the results I would like to reuse it the third accept, um, aspect to the whole automation part is called as your accuracy. If it's efficient, what we try and do, if it is reusable, but if it doesn't give us accurate results, then it's a waste. So what it means is, unless whatever we try and automate, now we will get to it, unless it is efficient, reusable and accurate, if these basic things are not met, then we are not successfully being able to automate that application okay that's our ground rule now team as you being a part of the testing organization and let's say you've come into it it is very important for you to document as to what you plan to do okay now the way you would test this application manually is you will open the browser you will go to the URL you'll enter a combination of values you'll process the loan application you'll capture what results are comparing you will compare the result uh, sorry capture the results that are being displayed compare it with what is expected and then close the browser right so these are at a high level what you would as a manual test engineer or user perform okay now as this happens team would it mean that if I go to this application perform a few steps on one given set of data and say that hey listen it's working I've entered values no errors in entering uh, at the end of the entering the values I could also get the results good but it doesn't mean that the application is working correctly why this application is in such a way that as I was telling you what it does is processes things what does it process certain input parameters that we pass and these are input parameters depending on which we get the result what are they how much do I plan to effort on a monthly basis what is my down payment what is my trade-in value what is the interest rate that I have these are the various parameters and there could be more of course okay but these are the basic parameters in one scenario and if I change the scenarios my output is changing okay now if I test for one set of such data I can never confirm that my application is perfectly working I need to keep changing trying different combinations and sets of data and see how it works what if a user says puts in and says uh, by an error that affordability is zero per month then what should be the result if the down payment is let's say zero or if let's say rate is very high because they have an extremely bad credit or uh, the what was this the trade-in value right yeah trade-in value they don't have anything so look at all these options look at the different combinations right so different users different backgrounds they have different needs and they do it so you want to be able to simulate different types of options that come up because of this combination and that makes your test very important to carry certain things called as test data this is not a filled up test data or this is not a complete test data but basically what I'm trying to put here is great so if I say my monthly payment is 200 and here is my zip my term is 48 months and let's say I have a 5.99 percent interest rate I have a trade-in of 2500 I can do a down payment of 4000 uh, now what I should get at the end of it is what is the total down uh, total down payment that I'll make what is the range of my vehicle and I think it's total market value or market value for the vehicle I don't know exactly it doesn't matter at the moment okay so these are the results that we will get at the end of it I as a manual user I am supposed to do this take these values so I just gave you one scenario now I can paste the same things here or increase this trade in by 100 each time and I get different sets of values I get different values right currently as manual users the whole world has been doing this process so far I'm showing you what we typically do as manual users right now all right each so we have to go take this information manually 
type it into my application, everything, perform the steps like a user would do, look at the values that will come out and take that value, put it out here, something like whatever, I don't even know, but just putting some random numbers, okay? And <clears throat> let's say 25,000 to 30,000. Just some random numbers to you, okay? And uh, let's say 24,000. And then we have to compare and say, oh, okay, this is a pass because this is correct. What are the two, three main issues, team? Number one is that this is not my complete list of data. I can have hundreds of different and sometimes thousands of different combinations of it, correct? And this is not the only functionality. We were only doing what can I effort. But what about car loan calculator, car lease calculator? APR versus cashback, maintenance costs and recalls. Look at the amount of functionalities, different things, right? So you need a lot of effort to do it. You have to go physically and do it every time. There's a lot of effort. It is time consuming, okay? So it is not efficient, number one. Second, while I'm entering, let's say I take 200 here. And while entering, I make a quick mistake because I'm trying to do it quickly and I put 2,000. I don't notice it, I capture whatever I get and I go back and I put that value here and I see it's a fail. Then we realized and we'll think why did we get a fail for these inputs? You keep retesting it, you get a pass. So it can not be accurate as long as you're constantly doing the same activity manually. It you tend you tend to fail, you tend to make a human error and that's why it's a problem. Okay. Next thing is great. All done, a lot of hard work, manually tested this month, done. Tomorrow, something changes in the application. A new uh, button comes here, loan term, instead of 60 months or something, it will talk about uh, days or years or whatever, or another finance rate options. Then you are stuck with having to redo everything again, repeat it. So you're not able to reuse any of your earlier hard work. And that problem has a solution and that solution is automation and Selenium is a great automation testing tool team. All right. Does it make sense as to what I just mentioned? I hope it's a good clear background for you. Team at the moment, are there any questions which are related with what we covered? Do not ask me please kindly questions on trainings, timings, cost and all that. Keep it for offline through an email exchange. Anything should be related with what we are learning for the day or what we've learned so far in the training, okay? If you have questions, please feel free to interact. There are over 50 participants in this current session. Hence, your way of interaction should start with the chat messages. If your question is still not getting answered as part of the chat, you can raise your hand and at that time, I will have you unmuted, okay? <clears throat> what can Selenium do that QTP can't, vice versa, okay? So, if I can give you a quick, Third, 90 seconds pitch between QTP and Selenium, the basic differences are this. Number one is that QTP and Selenium, there are two, there are different things. Number one, Selenium is only web-based applications, okay? Unless your application is working on a browser, you cannot test it using Selenium, unless. Only web-based application. QTP can do web-based applications and you can have different add-ins to work on things like SAP, Siebel, a .NET Windows app or client server and so on, okay? Q Selenium can do cross-browser. You can do this, take the same test without much changes, run it on IE, Firefox, Chrome, Safari and even your um, mobile browsers like your iPhone browser uh, or your Android browser and so on using a web driver. QTP only primarily works with IE as a browser and sometimes but little unreliable in a Firefox, okay? The other advantage is that Selenium supports a lot of different programming languages like background. It doesn't mean that it is irrespective of what the application was developed. Backend what it was developed doesn't matter. Your application testing that you've created, the scripts that you created, you can write those scripts in Java, PHP, Perl, Python, Ruby on Rails, C Sharp, uh, and so on, different programming languages, okay? However, VBScript is the only one for QTP. But the other big, big driver at the moment also is QTP comes with a very large price tag in terms of a license. Selenium has absolutely no 
uh, price it's an open source tool so anyone can buy any uh, sorry anyone can download uh, and configure it and start using it all right those are the primary advantages then there comes the nitty gritties in terms of you can do a lot of parallel testing the efficiency that we're talking about on automation what QTP can probably do in 10 hours Selenium can cut that life cycle down with its grid framework run tests in parallelly over the cloud or locally and do it in one hour just a uh, giving a conceptual idea need not be the same comparison but it can cut down the test life cycle also very significantly all right why do you have to learn Java when it is an automation tool so what happens typically team is the automation tool is built okay you have to give instructions to the automation to tool to do certain things okay when we do something called as a record which we'll see now in a minute you will see that everything is captured everything is being performed but there are limitations which will come to in day two and three primarily the whole power of automation is with the scripting is with the programming language if you cannot code or learn to code there is no need for such a automation engineer at least in this current industry they don't need they don't need people who can just do a record and run they want people who can customize and there's a lot of advantage for that okay now so what I'm gonna do team is now let me start with showing you selenium ID and then I'll come back to some of the other questions when you get the installation instructions actually configuration for your selenium ID how you can set it up on a Firefox uh, it's a very simple document. It's a very simple process. In fact, you can go to and say Selenium download and you'll see the link. You just click it, open it through Firefox. It will automatically install the latest Selenium IDE on your toolbar in Firefox. Okay. Now, what I have to do is open up Selenium ID and here is the view or the UI for this tool. What basically comes and the real neatness of this IDE tool is it's very easy very simple to look at it is not as complicated as a QTP or other test automation tools that you look at and it still is very powerful to perform whatever now what is most important team are certain aspects within it okay any automation tool unless you tell and give answers to it it cannot understand what we're doing and those answers are that if I send the steps to anyone in our team or anyone across your group then they're able to understand open a browser yes we know with which browser okay it's mentioned Firefox which you are okay it's mentioned enter values but where are the values out here oh, okay looks it looks neat enough for us to understand because we can perceive that monthly payment is here zip is here URL is here this is the browser and we are able to understand and probably perform all of these some questions which we don't know we probably will have still a question but if you need to teach a tool to automate the same process there are many more questions that we need to answer for example if I'm saying open a browser how should it open a browser which browser to open all of this have to be given as instructions so the better you can instruct a tool to automate the better it will learn and the better it will produce okay go to the application which URL where is the URL located how do we know enter values which values into what should I take the zip and enter it into monthly payment or the term into trading how do we get this combination of things and that's what is the trick of automation answering those questions will do that now selenium ID automatically gives the answers to such questions when I opened ID all you see is this test case tab you see something called as your command target value window and you see a log window at the bottom more importantly you will also see a button out here which is already pressed in by default if I press on that again it goes back this is something called as your recording mode recording mode is basically telling selenium ID an instruction that selenium start learning what I do from now on on this browser capture them and try and repeat them okay so I'm going to press this in I'm going to come to these buttons in a, in a few seconds but and then go about performing our task okay so we already know team we decided on some sets of data so let's enter 200 and see what happens to this window when it is under a record mode when we do this 
as soon as I press 200, you will see something getting generated here. Something under command called open, something called type, target and so on. Then let's say I click on go. Then you seeing for every step that I perform, there's at least one or two lines of code getting generated. And let's say that I change the zip code out here to 91367. Okay. And after changing the zip code, we already got this monthly payment from the first window that we entered. Great. Let's change that loan term to 48 months. Let's change that finance rate to 5.99. Uh, let's put a trade in value to about 3545. Uh, let's say we carrying cash of about 22 or 2300. Okay. I have taken arbitrary values and did the same thing like we did initially as manual testers. But at this time when I'm doing it, I had ID record these steps. Why? We'll come to it. Finally, click on calculate. When I perform these steps, the instructions I gave to Selenium ID is that Selenium learn what I did. Now I will say stop this record. Okay. At this point, what Selenium has done is it has understood the way to perform the steps in the manner that it can understand and repeat it. And there are three aspects to it. Number one is called command. Command basically tells Selenium as to what to do. Okay, it is all based on two things, team. Mainly two things. What do we want to do? Like, do we want to enter a text into an edit field? We want to click on a button, or we want to click on a checkbox or a drop down. That's your what part. Then the where part, which is where should we do that? Which is that button we want to click? Where should we enter the text? Your what? Uh, part is nothing but your command that you see here and you will see simple verbs being displayed like open type click select click and wait and so on and here are some other set of information that are used to identify the where part so these two questions when answered give selenium the ability to understand what to do and go about performing them now, great, all set, so, but Selenium, did you even learn the way I wanted you to? Can you show me? Before we try and ask Selenium to repeat it, I'm going to save this test case as. So I clicked on save. Now I'll go to my Selenium folder. If you notice, team, in my C drive, I created something called a C colon slash Selenium. In that, I have S29. And in here, I'll be putting all the uh, scripts that we get generated on the IDE, on the uh, Java, everything that we do, I'll put it here and on a regular basis, upload it onto screencast. So you can directly pull it from there. Okay. Now, what I want to do, let's give it a name. It's Edmunds, right? So I'll say ed underscore test case one. Now, ed underscore, what is this test case? Test case is nothing but a simple instruct set of steps that we will perform that have a specific beginning there is a beginning to that steps there are a series of steps we perform and there is an end to it then we know how we start and how we should end and the test case is basically giving us exactly what to do every time for example applications where like your facebook you can go to facebook.com login send us status or add friends and log out. So that's a test case so that user performs that as regular action and that's a scenario that we need to test and they become test cases. This is a scenario that I need to test where user is going in and able to enter inputs. Have I yet taught Q uh, Selenium how to capture the values here? Not yet, but at least the first few parts I did. Now that we saved it in our folder by saying save test case, I will go and say play current test case. What it would give as an instruction to Selenium is Selenium great, you have performed, you've learned, now let's run it. Do you see this team? The run has happened but it has happened extremely quickly, correct? It just went through and you see that suddenly there are colors being displayed. There are new lines getting generated. This is giving us a status kind of a report at the end of executing and finishing that. It's basically saying, did this step run? Did this step run? Was there any issue? Totally any problems anywhere and any failures while we're trying to do that. That's what is getting displayed here.
Now, too fast for us to see how Selenium has actually did it. And then I can slow down the test speed. Just slide it and now rerun it. As you see that when a code line is getting executed, a yellow uh, a shade is there on that line. As a line gets completed, it becomes light green in color. Do you see that happening, team? And as you see that is happening, you will see these steps being formed here. Okay. Now, let's try and understand what this is probably doing. Each of these steps are giving a specific instruction. Okay, a specific instruction to Selenium to perform that on the application. Is there a way that I can ask Selenium to go a little more slowly so that I can relate with what command, what target and what it is doing? Yes. Right click anywhere and say toggle breakpoint. What it does is puts a pause kind of a icon on that step. When we execute this test case, it will come and stop out there. It will try and stop before executing that step and then we can see what each of these commands are doing okay team what is a great way to learn this I can always keep up my first session say say help has this options is this read this do this download this and so on my my strongest belief which people uh, really appreciate and they come for the training is that when I show you things practically it is much more retaining in your uh, brain. However, I, that means that I'm not doing a spoon feeding. So it means that you have to practice. What you see today, go back and practice. If you cannot practice every day, take up all the sessions on a week's time, spend a weekend, practice. If you do not practice on what is being done, team, you cannot progress in such a manner that is expected. Okay? So please practice on what we do. Now with this break point that I said, how did I create? Let's create one more. Let's say this whatever this select is doing. We don't know yet. And say toggle breakpoint. And now I'm going to say play this current test case again. When I do that, it is showing yellow on line one. What does that mean? It means Selenium is saying, I'm ready to execute it. What do you want me to do? At this point, I can say pause or resume. Resume it from now. It's already paused. Resume. Or I can say step. When I say step, it will execute that and go to the next one. What happened? It was at a different URL earlier. It was at a different, if I manually go back, oh, okay, it will try and resubmit it. It was at a different URL. But when I said open, it took this browser from edmunds.com and put calculators as an extended URL to it and went to that URL. It's got a base URL which tells which is the home page. Then it tells the next thing as what, where in that home page should we go. When I gave my uh, calculators in it, it has taken me to that specific URL. Okay. Now, having done this team, we have executed step one. Now, let's go and see what this type ID equals something, value something does. What did it do? It took the value 200 and it put it in here. Okay, so is there a way I can change anything in these values? Yes, you can. So let's go to type and as soon as you click on type, the same commands that you see in a columnized manner in this table out here, you see those specific highlighted ones in a text manner in here and you can change those. So I can go and now change 9001. Okay, so I changed it before I got to executing that. Now let's see what happens. Click and wait, name equals go. Let's see what happens. It clicked, it waited for the new page and then it went on. But how does it know that it has to click on the first go button? Why didn't it click on the other go buttons? That's the questions. Those are the kind of questions that will make us better learners and master this tool. Now I'm saying click on something. Where does it click? Let's see. It is performed, though you and I probably cannot see, it is already clicked on this specific zip code. And now I'm seeing the next type, and this is where it is interesting because I changed. Let's see what it does. Do you see this? It already had a zip code, but it took the new one that I gave and put it. So does it mean that I can go here and change something also? Yes, probably. Makes sense. How about this select is not yet done? It says label equals 48 months. How about saying label equals... Uh, 36 months 
just you know experimenting with what is already created and say step into what happened did it even do that oh no no, no. it was already there in that step so it didn't take it didn't take this input team that's why it didn't do. but the whole concept is i could change whatever i see in these values and i'm able to it's just like providing different values as we were doing in this test data so take these values and put it in here and selenium has already created a script very quickly to be able to perform the same things it is taking all the values and it is performing those here great how about i now change it to something else something different altogether let's say that i go in here and instead of 200 let's say i change 345 random playing around with it seeing what will happen to the tool when we do something okay label equals 36 months let's say now i want label equals 40 months instead of 36 months and uh, type this okay whatever so giving different information we saw what the breakpoint does it will pause for us at that point now let's remove those breakpoints by right clicking and again selecting that or just hitting your b on your keyboard with the selection on that specific step and let's rerun this test waiting for the page it is trying to load it could be an issue with my application it could be an issue with my browser not loading so there could be so many things that could have gone wrong but it's still saying waiting for this page so I'm going to stop this what happened okay there you go now it's executing okay so it's executing in a slow manner on all those that we gave okay now what happened unlike earlier I got a little pinkish kind of a result and it said that there is an error till now it never gave me a red line it kept giving me green but why do you think it is giving me an error it says option with label 40 mounts not found where is that occurring out here which is this after I enter the zip code the next one which one am I doing after that out here so any idea team what could have resulted in that you can use the chat team to send me a message about it what could have resulted in it the simple thing could have been that why did it work earlier because when it captured it was good when I started to play around it started throwing error so I wanted to put 40 months in here but what do I get I get 36 48 60 72 there is no option for 40 months so it cannot select something that is not there when I try and force selenium to perform a step and it cannot it either stops execution or it shows that it couldn't and that's what it did at this point it stopped the execution it is also telling me that a error occurred okay so this log is a way for you to represent that information now I can say clear whatever I see here and I could rerun this test with corrected set of data so how about 60 months that should be good probably correct and we can rerun this test now so team that's a quick start for kind of a day one there are a few more things that I wanted to do but uh, it requires a little bit more on the target and command part which will come to tomorrow primarily on the X path and so on okay is there any way to export the log there may be a way to export the log but typically what happens team is that whatever you see here in a real-time scenario we rarely work with an IDE ID is a great starting point to start working once we are done with the basic concepts out of it then we get into the real automation through coding either a Java or any other language and we will use a web driver concept or an RC concept to run the test from our code directly whatever you see here we will ourselves physically write this code in a different language and start working with it so IDE if you ask me I'm not an IDE expert I, I because I didn't spend so much time on it very quickly we go away from IDE into the most important aspects but ID is a great starting point to learn our fundamentals
there could be probably I could right click and copy this or select all and copy and see if I can paste it there you go you could copy that and paste those results that is a question which is asked in the uh, chat does IDE works only with Firefox yes so your selenium IDE which is your integrated development environment for those tests is only working will only work with a Firefox browser yes you can record and run only on a Firefox I cannot change the browser in this way but when I move it using a server or a web driver I can run it on different other browsers right uh, could you give an idea of what percentage of a session would be focusing on IDE uh, Krutika I would say 5% so basically today and tomorrow and then IDE is over then we won't even come back to IDE just a little bit basics on it sometimes to see hey what did this great tutor called IDE teach us at the beginning what you see as those three free demo videos on YouTube is everything about IDE so anyone wanting to learn selenium as a quick free start those are the videos where does it store the objects it is recording great question Shilpa so unlike QTP it doesn't have anything at the background to store them in fact I worked so long with QTP but when I started with selenium that was my first question how is selenium storing the address or identification properties for these objects that it sees it is the way it has been structured is so smart that it uses something called as an XPath concept within the target and directly uses that it doesn't require to store any other information apart from what you see here okay uh, how can I wait for a couple of seconds like we do we using QTP okay so there is no specific direct command in IDE that you can do however if I let's say that after we click and wait here between click and wait you want to wait for let's say three seconds first right click on click that step before which you want a new step right click and say insert new command there is one simple uh, command that I can type here which will get generated here called as pause once I say pause and let's say I put 3000 in here you will see this information getting generated now when we run this what will happen is the test will run and it that's that step it will pause for 3000 milliseconds or 3 seconds before it goes to the next step but the problem is if you have already waited if you have completed it the pause may not already always work the better thing for us to use are wait statements similar to that you see in other programming languages at the script level all right just be now let's see what is not an option okay we got that we got that I'm trying to take questions up from the chat as you see I have doubt we're providing 10,000 test data through XLS for this which where result output will display which means thousand item browser will open our automatically result will display in the XLS so the end eventual uh, requirement for us is I will keep the test data either in an Excel or a database or an XML or a flat file okay that could be my source of my test data which is telling what sets of data should we take and execute on the application then my selenium scripts should be able to read all this data in whatever format take those as inputs and put it into the application get the outputs in terms of the loans uh, and affordability and so on in this case back into our scripts in selenium either java or whatever and then we should be able to decide do we want to send an email out of these results do we want to put it into an xml do we want to put it into excel database update those test data and so on in this case as an exercise that we will continue to do is I want eventually my test to take inputs from here in the blue columns get the outputs from the application in this purple column and be able to decide if it is correct or not and say if it is pass or fail in this gray column I want my test data to get updated here my results of the run to be updated here is it possible to skip some steps in ID Suresh uh, honestly I don't know. I don't know if I can skip any specific tests, steps 
but probably you should be able to uh, put a breakpoint somewhere and be able to skip it. But I have never even tried so hard to break my head on an ID because I know that I can take the same thing using my options, convert it into something called as format to a JUnit 4 remote control, for example. And once I do this, I get my Java code. Okay, for the same test, here is my Java code. Now, we are the better we know how to use this code, execute this code, the stronger we'll get. So, if I want to skip any statement in my Java code, all I will do is I will say if this condition is true, then I will say click on this. Okay. So that is telling me, giving me the power at a script level. Else, click on something else. Okay. So that's what I want you to be able to master. This is your conditions. Skipping a step, IDE, I don't know. Java, yes. And this is what I want you to know. Can we do parameterization? Absolutely, yes. All that we see here, and tomorrow when we continue, team, let's go back to the format HTML. Now, team, I've shown you this JUnit 4. It may be not available to you directly. What you'll need to do is go to Options, Options, and out here, you will see a checkbox called Enable Experimental Features. You must check this to be able to see those different formats, okay? Because newer versions of IDE, they're still trying to test out those. Now, let's go back to the HTML and go to the table tab, you will see that basic code. So, you can, whatever you see, 345, instead of putting it here, I will create a variable in my Eclipse, which we will use, and say, my variable, what was that? Down, okay, is a string, and I can say v down equals this 345 as a Java code, and replace this value here. Now, the beauty of this script is I could parameterize, I could read from Excel, I could write logics, I could say repeat these steps X number of times, uh, I could work with databases, I could do so many different things. When I recorded on ID, it gave me the standard script. We take the standard script, we put it into our Eclipse through which I can run Java tests and be able to customize that further. And that's how we'll slowly, gradually learn. Okay, let's see. I was never worked. I've never worked with Java, so will I find it tough to cope with Selenium? No. Uh, if I ask the audience right now, how many people have worked with Java or any other programming languages, you will see that only five percent of people have any kind of an exposure. That's my audience. I know you haven't, and it is my duty to try and teach you the basics in a way that you can understand with practice. Okay. What if my application is not fully supported by Firefox? Doesn't matter because IDE is not such a useful tool for us at a stage where we will get to because all that we do here going forward, we'll do the same thing and instead of we going and recording and telling that, okay, this is the code, I will know what to do when I want to do something. I will know how to get to it and so on. Okay, I will know exactly that this code that IDE got to me in Java, we can write this code ourselves. That's the intent. How much Java should we know if one is not a programmer? You need to know a lot of Java. You don't need to know the amount of Java that a developer would, but you would need to know the basic concept structure of different methods, uh, each statement, how variables, loops, and all that work. We will learn each of them, basics, fundamentals, as we go along. How is Selenium able to identify an object or using its unique property? QTP captures many properties for an object. So, yes. When I did a record on this button, for example, the zip code that you see, right? <clears throat> if I go to the slash calculators, where is that uh, slash? So team, sorry, it's already 647. Um, I'm, I was trying to take a lot of questions from the chat and kept it a little interactive. Uh, <clears throat> but let's see. Uh, basically, very simple, very quick. I wanted to show you that if I, at this point, start to record. When I clicked on this go, this is the button we got, correct? Now, this is the line. If I click on record and let's say I enter 234 and I click on this go button, okay? I click on this go button, enter a vehicle price, okay? Fair enough. 345 and I click on this go button. Now do you see for the first time it gave name equals go. 
but the next go button I hit, it generated completely different. So those are the attributes, how uh, Selenium picks up those targets. That decides the identification, okay? Uh, Amit, that was the answer to your question. Uh, do we, core Java, Java, don't worry about all those fancy terms that the industry is using. You need to know Java, basic as a programming language, which is core Java, and that's what we will do. Difference between Java and JNet. So team, I'll take most of the other questions which are pending uh, in the next session because I'm already three, four minutes over the scheduled end. Uh, but primarily, JUnit is a subset which has been brought out of Java. It's a framework already built in Java, okay? So first, we need to know basics of Java, and we can do it through JUnit also. JUnit gives certain kind of a functionality that makes our tests better and when we apply the concept of ant tool with it for reporting you will see you have more customized results okay so that it's easier when I show it to you in a practical manner team that's about it for now the day two is going to be probably on Tuesday I will communicate to you because a lot of people have a long weekend so uh, I will keep you posted on the day three uh, day two sorry and uh, the next steps with it okay Thank you everyone. This video will get uploaded uh, also on YouTube and I'll send you the link. Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining in. Take care. Bye now and we'll see you back in the next session. Bye everyone. Thank you.